I could have been somebody. For our first episode, we'll be talking about Enter the Dragon, which defined the future of cinema and was way ahead of the curve in many aspects. A lot of the incredible impact of this film was thanks to the persistence of the film's star, Bruce Lee. Martial arts movies are now far from the hokey, chop socky pictures of the 1970s, but even with the gritty, realistic nature of modern-day martial arts cinema, they still rarely touch the philosophical elements Bruce Lee wrote in Enter the Dragon. Which brings us to the next level of impact brought about by Enter the Dragon, its philosophical impact. Bruce Lee is often regarded as the grandfather of MMA due to the creation of his own martial art, Jeet Kune Do. But another major reason why he was an instrumental piece in the inception of MMA is often overlooked. Something that Bruce Lee wrote about a lot, and something that Bruce Lee wanted Game of Death to be about, was to not be limited by styles or systems. In Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee made it a point to demonstrate the limiting nature of sticking to one system or style. This is visually exemplified by how out of sync the hordes of Han's henchmen were. Additional to being out of sync, Bruce made it a point to demonstrate how they were trapped in the system they were a part of by how they were policed by the likes of Bolo when failing to do their job efficiently. This showed that they were trapped in the one style that they had been practicing, in this case Han style. At least it showed it metaphorically, but it is also represented even other tournament participants. It included them because even if they transcended the limitations of schools and became master of their own, they were still trapped with their own styles or martial arts systems. You must attend the morning ritual in uniform. Bruce escaped systems and styles, and this is emphasized in the scene here. This early? Why you no wear uniform? Notice how Roper and Williams opted to wear uniforms, but Lee did not. In this very same scene, Lee absolutely dismantles O'Hara, a character presented early in the film as being a potential threat as he broke bricks, lit a flame, and had two by fours broken over his arms. Lee, of course, kills O'Hara in this scene, which is cinematically established because O'Hara killed Lee's sister, but metaphorically it could be interpreted as Lee completely rejecting the systems and styles of martial arts. Another philosophical note in Enter the Dragon is the idea of destroying the image of the ego, which is exemplified by Lee's teacher when he told him, You must remember, the enemy has only images and illusions, behind which he hides his true motives. Destroy the image and it will break the enemy. This is once again repeated, again in Obi-Wan Kenobi style, prior to Star Wars, when Bruce Lee was battling Han in the mirror hall. If you don't pay attention to what this quote means, you can take it literally as an oh, break the mirrors and you can find Han. If you understand the deeper meaning behind this quote and Han's character, it is extremely impactful. As established by Lee's teacher, Lee and Han are from the same school and it is why Han is the only character in all of Enter the Dragon who actually presents a threat to Lee. Han's proficiency is also exemplified earlier in the film by easily dismantling Williams. This presented Han as being a parallel master to Lee from the same school. The teacher established that Han was using the images and illusions of being this supreme martial arts master for his own gain. Even the likes of O'Hara and Bolo fell in line to help enforce the illusion and compliance to that illusion for his students to remain loyal to Han as this unbeatable master. The Hall of Mirrors can also be interpreted as the feedback loop that restricts progress within martial arts styles. Lee had to escape the feedback loop that was brought on by martial arts styles in order for him to beat his physical equal Han, who was again a master of the same school and of the same martial arts style. And to touch on another movie for a second, in Game of Death, Bruce Lee ascends through levels of a castle by defeating artists of different styles. Bruce Lee once established that he wrote Karim Abdul-Jabbar's character as a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, and that he had to defeat the limitation of even the martial arts style he created in order to become a truly actualized martial artist. 
Bruce wrote Game of Death before he helped write Enter the Dragon, so in his own personal philosophical journey, he had already understood this, and to him, martial arts are a representation of real life. In this scene, Lee is teaching his student the importance of emotional content in a combative situation. How did it feel to you? Let me think. Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all Lee's that heavenly glory. point of don't think, feel, is directed towards martial arts. In Lee's earlier statement towards his teacher, he explained. I do not hit. It hits all by itself. He was trying to teach his student to understand that thinking too much limits the student's ability as a martial artist. Because in a combative situation, having to think of techniques will never lead to success. Just like playing a musical instrument, if you're thinking about what note to play next, you won't be able to pull it off. Oh no. Regarding the finger pointing away to the moon quote, remember this because I will come back to it. But for now, Lee is saying to his student that I am the finger and your goal is the moon. I can only help lead you to your goal as your teacher, but you as a student have to strive to achieve them on your own. The philosophy in Enter the Dragon is limited to short quotes and deep-rooted metaphors, but it's something Bruce fought for in Hollywood for many years. Perhaps one of the biggest betrayals in Hollywood history happened when Bruce Lee pitched this show, Kung Fu. When Bruce Lee pitched and delivered a treatment for the show Kung Fu, Bruce was told by producers that audiences would not accept an oriental lead. Bruce accepted the denial of the pitch and continued to struggle in Hollywood. Prior to leaving Hollywood for Hong Kong, Bruce Lee was a world-renowned martial artist who was well-respected internationally. Bruce Lee often did private lessons with the likes of karate champions such as Chuck Norris and Joe Lewis, and Bruce was also doing one-on-one -on -one lessons with celebrities like Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and Sharon Tate. Despite this credibility, Bruce found himself denying roles more often than accepting them due to the racist depiction of Asians. Bruce, now tired of this, left for Hong Kong to pursue the stardom he deserved. Fast forward to 1972 and Bruce found that the studios Bruce pitched Kung Fu to went behind his back and produced the show without any of his involvement. And worse yet, casted David Carradine a white man as the lead. This segues us into our next level of impact Enter the Dragon had, its cultural impact. 